From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech Podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. And by audible.com. Deemable Tech listeners can get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash deemable. Over 100,000 titles to choose from from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1 888 972 9866. 68. Success? Success. Success. <laughs> or send us an email at questions at Well, tonight on Deemable Tech, folks, uh, we need you to do us a favor. Mm. If you like the show and if you want to hear more episodes of Deemable Tech, we need you to do something for us. We need you to tell your friends about us. Mm -hmm. We need you to share us on Facebook, tweet about us on Twitter, and or just send an email to your friends. You know, email. It's okay. If you don't do the Facebook or the Twitter, just send an email out and tell them to check us out. Or, you know, if you talk to people in real life or on the phone, you could tell them that way too. It's okay. It's, it's fine. Give them a call on the phone. Because you know how, <clears throat> excuse me, you know how Tinkerbell would die if people, you know, didn't believe in her? Mm. Okay, well, we're kind of like that. <laughs> Except, you know, the energy that we depend on is subscriptions, likes, and follows. And it's, it's real. Like, we, we actually have to grow our audience or we're just not going to go anywhere. Like, we won't be able to continue doing our show. It, it's, it's a real thing. Like, I'm not just being like a diva and I want more likes and subscribes. We got to get a bigger audience because if we don't get a bigger audience, we can't help people because they don't know about us. So, first off, if you haven't done it already, subscribe to us in iTunes and on YouTube. Just search for Deemable Tech. Just search Deemable, and it'll be the first thing that comes up, fortunately. Um, also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter if you are on either of those networks. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, right now, uh, the Deemable Tech community is pretty small. We only have about 150 subscribers on our podcast. We've got about 25 subscribers on YouTube, which, I mean, we just got started. We just got on YouTube, so that's not too bad. Uh, we do have about uh, just over 1,000 likes on Facebook and, and followers on Twitter, but it's really subscribers that really count. I mean, that's our audience. Those are the people who are actually watching the show or listening to the show. So I tell you what, I haven't told Sean or Tom about this. This is a surprise. Uh-oh. I've got a deal for our listeners. If we hit 500 subscribers on iTunes and 200 subscribers on YouTube, I'll give away an Amazon gift card. So, sound good? What do you guys think? Whoa, how, mu how much are we talking here? <laughs> well, I think we should, we did $20 when we hit 200 likes on, on Facebook. So, That's I true. think we should do 50 bucks. Oh, big think, time. Big, yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, okay, all right, we'll do it. Okay, so you got to take some notes. Here's what you have to do to be eligible to receive a $50 Amazon gift card. You have to like us on Facebook. Second thing is you have to follow us on Twitter. And the third thing is you have to subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. I know it's a lot of work. I got one more for you. You got to send us an email. And the email is giftcard at deemable.com. So send an email to giftcard at deemable.com. That's D-E-E-M-A-B-L-E dot -E -E com. And in that email, I need you to tell us your Facebook name, your Twitter name, and your YouTube username. I don't really care about your Facebook name, your Twitter name, and your YouTube username, but I need them because we're going to take all the eligible emails, everybody who sends us an email with their Facebook name, Twitter name, and, user, and YouTube username, and we're going to pick one at random. And that's the person who will win the $50 Amazon gift card. And we'll announce that on the show. We'll do the drawing live here on the show. But you got to include all of those. So if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter and like us. And it's we're deemable. And at on, deemable. At deemable, yeah. On Facebook, it's facebook.com slash deemable. On YouTube, it's youtube.com slash deemable tech. Not too hard. It's, it's pretty easy to find. And if you don't, if you don't include all of them, you're disqualified. You get nothing. Is this harsh? It is. It's really harsh. <laughs> but we need that information because we're going to check. If you don't like us, you're disqualified. If you don't follow us on Twitter, you're disqualified. 
What about Google Plus? Should they <laughs> sure, they can, Plus? they can like us on Google Plus. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> hey, Ray. Yeah. Uh, can uh, say the producer <laughs> of Deemable Tech enter this contest? You know, every time you hear contest rules, they say, you know, uh, uh, staff or, or participants. Mm -hmm. um, so technically, I'm probably not supposed to. So no. All right, I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> you can still like us and subscribe and, and do all that. So the rules are like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. And we'll pick somebody who emails us at gift card at com, includes all that information, and we'll pick one at random and send them a $50 Amazon gift card. Now, here's the thing. We need you to do that soon. So you've got until the end of August. Seems fair. We have to reach 500 likes or 500 subscribers on iTunes and at least 200 on YouTube in order for us to give this away. So you got to get out there and do it. All right. Uh, there's something else I wanted to say. Do we have anyone special in the studio today? Oh, <laughs> That's right. Oh, we'll include all these instructions on the show notes for tonight's or tonight's episode. So if you didn't catch all that, you don't have to rewind and go back. We'll include the notes in the show notes. <laughs> That's the rewind sound. <laughs> Tom just rewound himself. Come back to current time. Okay. Well, actually, yes, uh, we do have a special guest uh, with us back in the studio again, Angel Torres, the CEO and founder of The Logica, which is a web and app development company. You might know him. He was back on our show back in February. Or if he came to OneSpark, you might know him from them. So thanks for coming on the show, Angel. Yeah, hey, thank you guys for inviting me. Cool. So uh, I want to ask you about what's going on with the Aurora app and any other project that The Logica is up to uh, that you could talk about. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> public knowledge. Um, but I'm sure you've heard about the changes at OneSpark that are coming too, right? Yes. Yeah, there's a bunch of changes coming for uh, OneSpark 2014. Uh, so I want to see what you think about that, too. Sounds like fun? Yeah, sounds cool. great. Yeah. All right, well, first... Wait, they're calling it One Spark 2014? Yeah. I've been calling it Two Spark. Is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Spark Two. Spark two. Um, <laughs> yes, that is wrong. You, you are incorrect. <laughs> I think they don't like that. <laughs> they're going to send a cease and desist to you. Two Spark, tell you to stop on. that. Two, two Spark is two good. Spark. No, but no. But all right, before we get into that, uh, let's talk about some apps. Okay. Um... What apps have you been into? Oh, let me back up. We have been trying to come up with an app segment <laughs> for our show for the longest time because a lot of people just, they don't discover apps, that, especially on, on iTunes. It's kind of hard to find new apps. There's just a bunch of apps and mm -hmm. you can't tell what's worth buying and what's <laughs> not worth buying. Uh, so we've been trying to kind of curate that and do a regular segment. We don't do it with any regularity at all. <laughs> uh, we're going to try and change that. But the hardest part about this has been coming up with a name. Yeah. Uh, what are some that we've come up with that, that didn't fly? We didn't keep them? Uh, there's Tap That App. Yeah. Um, I like that one. In use. That's amazing. It's yeah. Brilliant. That um, is amazing. Uh, gosh. I Appable. Remember. Appable. We tried to go Ooh, with the Deemable. Just, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes what's it. What's your number on a scale of 1 to 10? What's, what's your number on that, on Appable? Appable? I don't know. I like it. Oh, okay. It does have some kind of ring to it, you yeah. know? And you can tell it belongs to us. So. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Deemable. What Appable. was the other one? Apps of Steel? Apps of Steel. Apps of Steel. I came up with tonight. Apps of Steel. <laughs> yeah. I had one the um, other, the other last week. App a day. That's kind of... You know, um, that's already been used, It didn't too. have app, app in the name. App the moment. Oh, like... I like pandemonium. I, I look at me. I'm going. Pandemonium. <laughs> yeah. Sounds diminished. Pandemonium. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, right. so we still have segment. no. It, that's okay. That app so we segment. have no name. Right? The, the app segment on Demobile Tech. <laughs> that's what it's called. The worst name ever. But Angel, you're an app guy, um, an app developer. So what do you like in apps right now? Huh. You know, I've been lately. I've been a lot into um, games and sure. productivity apps. Okay. You know, in those two. And um, like when I had to leave my Android um, world for mm -hmm. an iOS device, you know, mm -hmm. I was loving the Google Calendar and everything else. But oh, when sure. it comes to iOS, that mm -hmm. deep integration is not there. So it kind of forced me to find productivity apps that work great with Google Calendar and sure. so on like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and cooler games, of course. So I started in. Yeah. So right now I'm really into this, this app for, um, for getting things done in your phone called um, IFTTT. Okay. F -T -T -T. I F T T T. I F T T T. Yeah. Okay. So if like if this then that. Right. Oh. Yeah. If this then that. 
And, you know, it started kind of like I, I, I was reading a blog about it and they were talking about like how crazy awesome is it's it's this app. And I was like, okay, I'll go okay. and try it. And I'm a guy that takes a lot of like screenshots on my iOS, for example. Uh-huh. Right. So one of the rules that I could create is like whenever I do that, it's mm-hmm. going to automatically send me an email okay. with that picture. And that accelerates nice. so many things because if I'm taking a screenshot, you know, it, I'm definitely going to send it to myself or to someone. Right. So if I can do a, a, a rule like that, that automatically does it, it really saves a lot of time. And you get a lot of creative with like what things can happen with this app. And I've been really just just hooked on this app for a, for a while now. Ooh, it's available on Android, it looks like. There you go, yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, that's okay, cool. awesome. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. I um, You know, I had heard about it a long time because it's a website too, mm-hmm. ifttt.com. Yes. yes. And uh, it did things with social networks on the web. Mm-hmm. So like you could, if someone sent you a, or sent a tweet at you, mm-hmm. you could have an email sent to you letting you know about it. Yes. Um, that sort of thing. So I heard about it on iPhone and I actually downloaded it, but I haven't used it yet. Because I keep going, well, okay, um, I don't know what I'll do with it. But that's a neat idea with having the, um, when you take a screenshot. It is, because at the end of the day, you work with so many apps that mm-hmm. you wish you had one one app to control them all. Yeah, sure, you know? absolutely. So, that's good. Now, one thing I've always struggled with, uh, even before work doing the Demo Tech thing, um, is managing a bunch of different social networks. So, can mm-hmm. you use IFTTT to, like, send one post onto multiple networks? Could you do that? You know, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. That'd I know cool. that you can integrate with all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I don't know if you could do that. Would be really cool. So maybe it would say like, if you post something on Twitter, we'll also it also post it on Facebook yeah. yes. and oh, all so the good. other things. That'd so be so good. Does it work with any app, or is there a specified list of apps? Yeah, they call them channels, and it's okay. kind of cute the way like they brand the whole thing. Like, um, you build recipes. Like the oh, if, nice. then that, you know, sure. if this, then that yeah. is recipes. And you can build your own recipe or you can actually go to a marketplace where like other people's recipes. Oh, that's cool. And you can oh, like, cool. oh, I'm going to try this out. Mm-hmm. And then ah. the channels that you can use the recipes on are pretty much like Instagram, Facebook. And it has, it has over oh. 30. And so there's a lot of integrations there. It's a Very little cool. tedious when you have to like mm-hmm. connect to each yeah. one of them. But mm-hmm. once it's done... You start creating this recipe, so it's nice. really cool. That's really cool. I, I just opened up the app, and uh, the one that they describe, the recipe, that, that the default one that uh-huh. it tells you about is if you put something on Instagram, then save it to my Dropbox. Yes. And that's uh. that's really a great idea because, like, I know with Facebook, I often think Facebook's got those pictures and I don't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I could set it up to where if I post a picture to Facebook, it automatically saves it to my Dropbox. Right. And I've got it saved somewhere else. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And the recipes get creative and creative. Yeah, I've seen I, recipes. I, I definitely oh. check out those recipes. Another yeah. another example on there is if you create a new contact, it automatically sends them an email saying, nice meeting you. Yes. That's that cool. Was, that's really cool. When you so add that like, person. Yeah. So it's kind of like a little bit of programming inside of your mm-hmm. iPhone. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it's pretty simple to do. You don't have to, like, no Very, code or anything. No code or nothing. Yeah. It's super easy. Oh, Very cool. This is cool. I'm just browsing the recipes. Yeah. So there's, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the NASA Picture of the Day website. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, love I love the NASA love Picture that. of the Day. Yeah. There's a recipe, download NASA's Picture of the Day to Dropbox. Wow. Yeah. You That's see? pretty cool. That's so cool. I'd like to have it email me that every day. I actually was just thinking that because I want the description. Because you yeah. Otherwise, can. like, here you are stars. Can. You definitely can. <laughs> That's cool. So check it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's free. It's completely yeah. free. Fake I a have... phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet, I know with I, iOS it does, if you go to ifttt.com on your iPhone, it gives you the link to the app directly. So yeah, you can nice. pull it up that way. Uh, Tom, well, excuse me, I got to take this call. What? There's <laughs> <laughs> a fake like, phone call yeah. recipe. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, so what about you? You got any apps? Oh, um, putting me on the spot. I man. am. I thought you were prepared. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I I've got I some see. <laughs> uh, games I've been playing. Um, I, you know, I just uh, I wanted a good radio app. Um, recently. Oh, for listening actually, to radio. Yes. Oh, okay. I actually, listen to WJCT, which is uh, the station we're on here. Um, yeah. Shouts out to them. But uh, so I found an app called TuneIn, and mm, mm. there's a lot of apps. Android, the thing is, like, there's always 50 million apps for everything. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, uh, TuneIn, though, strikes me as, and I've just played with it a little bit, but it's really clean. Like, uh, it looks professional, and so that impresses me about it. And it was very easy to, um, you know, get onto WJCC. And and not only that, it's got a, I don't know if this is a common feature, but it's got, you, you'll check your GPS location, mm-hmm. and it yep. knows what radio stations are nearby. Yeah, it is really cool. So, yeah. 
I've got that one. It's on iOS as well. Okay, cool. That one's a great one for listening to, to terrestrial radio stations. It picks those up. Yeah. Uh, well, I will go with one in the same vein, which is PRX Remix. PRX Remix. If you enjoy listening to public radio, get PRX Remix. It's a free app. And what it does is it takes the best uh, pieces on PRX. It's actually curated by the editors at PRX. Oh, really? And loads them into your playlist. Huh. And it just keeps playing. It just keeps playing from That's story cool. to story to story. It just keeps rolling through. So listening to hours and hours of the best stories on PRX, yeah, it's really, cool. really awesome. PRX. So, yeah, it's a really great app. PRX Remix. Yeah. And... um. I don't know. Do you think there's another app we should tell people about? Uh, is it ready? I think it's ready. Okay. All right. So there's another app uh, that I, I kind of like. Um, it, I've been playing with it for a little bit. It's the Deemable Tech app. Oh, my God. Woo! We finally got it launched. Um, we were hesitant to announce it because we uh, had some some kinks with it, of course. That to happens out, yeah. to every new app, so that's not surprising. Mm. But... If you go to deemable.com on your iPhone or Android, it will tell you right at the beginning, you know, if you want to download the app, download the app. It's really awesome. It actually works really great. Mm -hmm. um, you can listen to the show. Uh, just click listen or tap listen. Uh, you can read any articles that we've written. Just tap read. And uh, you can ask a question directly from your phone without calling. You can just tap ask and uh, fill out the form. And let us know what your question is. You can do it right from your from your device. And also, too, you if when you're installing it, ask if you want to get notifications. Do that because you'll get put an update every time we put out a new article or new mm -hmm. a new uh, podcast. And right on your phone, you know you don't have to look at your email if you signed up for the email list. You'll get a notification on your phone. You can go right to it and listen to the show. So. Nice. For everybody that helped us out on Kickstarter, including Mr. Oh, Torres, thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Because yes. um, we couldn't you. have done this without you because we're broke. <laughs> we have no money. That Our budget was zero. Uh, so we couldn't afford to do it. But uh, be, with all of your support, we were able to do it. And uh, that being said, um, for all of you supporters that still haven't received your rewards, I'm getting them out to you this week. I promise. I got the, the shipping labels printed out. I'm going down. I'm just so lazy about shipping. I hate shipping stuff. And that's the only reason. I, I got all the stuff. I got everything. I got the <laughs> stickers. I got the stress balls. I've got the mouse pads. They're just sitting in a box in my house. And I'm sorry. So you guys are awesome. And I should have got them out to you sooner. But uh, it's going out this week. So that's cool. yell at me if I don't have it out to you. <laughs> Any, uh, so that's exciting. Any other um, apps non deemable Anyone? Um, wants to bring up or should we take some questions you know uh, did I did I I did I did the PRX app yeah. I gotta say this I downloaded an app this week it's called Sonic Dash and we talked about it a little bit yeah. before the show <laughs> I was a fan of Sonic back in the day mm -hmm. and uh, I downloaded Sonic Dash because it was free and like it was Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic the Hedgehog yeah, yeah from Sega and um, Sega first off I was disappointed when it opened up to silence the Sega was on the screen but there was no Sega, you know, no, nothing. And then the theme song. There wasn't even the, the Sonic theme song. It's some <laughs> new, doesn't even sound like it at all. But uh, actually, the gameplay is pretty good. Uh, if you like, uh, what are they, those called? Those runners, uh, endless runners. Endless yeah. Runners, yeah. Um, like uh, well, Sonic Temple was Run. Sonic the original runner. Mm -hmm. He was, yeah. It seems it, like it a made natural perfect fit. sense. Yeah. Instead of watching him side scroll, you're watching him from behind run. So the the, the gameplay is pretty cool. It's not that bad. Uh, it's a little janky. I'll be honest. It, it's not quite as as fluid as like Temple Run, because um, you have to swipe him to the left and mm -hmm. right instead of just kind of lean the phone left yeah. and right. Um, but it's different gameplay, which is kind of fun at the same time. Right. Uh, so I, I like it. It's it's not bad. Uh, but if you're a Sonic fan. You might be disappointed when you don't even hear the Sonic theme song. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Angel, you got any others you want to share? Um, do you know, on the game, just just following on the yeah. game, uh -huh. Limbo. I don't know if you Limbo. guys have played Limbo. Limbo. Uh -huh. mm. It. Um, I started playing Limbo on the Xbox 360. It's one of those indie games. Mm -hmm. Small, small, small shop. Um, it was 
amazing. And um, now they put it in onto iOS. Oh, cool. And I think it's on Android too. I don't want to say anything a lot about the game because it's like, you know, it's so unique. Yeah. Okay. But the gameplay is just very immersive uh -huh. and it is an unbelievable game. So if you haven't like tried it out, yeah. check it out. It's called Limbo. It's on Android. Did you say it was on, on I'm, iPhone too? I'm pretty sure it's on, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Android, but oh, it's okay. on iOS for sure. Oh, okay, cool. Let me check. Yeah. Me check. Limbo. Limbo. Is it free or is it? Uh, I think it's free. Ninety nine. If not, no. it may be like one ninety nine. Okay, but it's totally worth it. Cool. We'll check it out. Yeah. All right, and I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the show notes. Cool. cool. Uh, and we will put links to all of the uh, the apps, including, of course, ours, in the show notes. Um, There's Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh has an app. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's I very don't... similar, but <laughs> yeah. no. Do you that's... know what the name of the studio is Angel? I do not. Okay. Um, I don't. There's Gravity Maze, Escape from Limbo, Limbo so, PC emulator. So it may be only on iOS. Yeah. Then. So yeah, it may. Be. I don't. I don't think it looks exclusive. like L I M B O. Yeah. That's why you have to dual. You have to dual wield. You have to have a Limbo game. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah. Okay, it may be a little that's steep. Not, that's not too bad. But it's that's totally worth worse. it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I know that ninety nine cent is the price point for apps now. Uh, I will pay more for a good app. That's me. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it, it, give me a demo. Like you know, I, I want to. Yeah. Let me I wanna try it. Try like, it before I buy. Yeah. It. But they should do that. Yeah. They should allow you to download an app mm -hmm. and use it for like like an hour. Sure. And yeah. after that, like, you have to pay to unlock yeah. it. That'll be actually Boom. a pretty cool like yeah. in-app purchase. I like that yeah. about the uh, the the Aoya or the Ouya that just came out. I don't know, I don't know how you say it. the Android-based uh, game console. Uh -huh. The ninety-nine dollar game console. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they have a. It's not. It's a policy, basically, mm -hmm. for their app store that any game you put out there um, has to have a free version to try. Oh, okay. um, and I think that's really smart. Yeah, yeah, that most most smart. games do, to be fair. Yeah, um, yeah. Most yeah. games yeah. have that demo thing, the demo trial. But, uh, you know, I would almost, in most cases, like, if I enjoy the game, I'd rather pay some money and not have it be, like, one of those free-to-play with, like, ads everywhere no, and yeah. uh, buy all this crap. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just want the full experience. The I full will experience. pay you money. Yep. Just I'll, I'll give you your four your four bucks of blood money or whatever. Just <laughs> let me play the game. Okay? Yeah. Cuz that's the thing that, like, in my way. I I I'm, we've talked about this before, you know, with Android, you got that 15 minute window yeah. where you can automatically get a refund. That's After true. that, you're at the developers. Mm -hmm. That means you discretion. might you got to get into that app immediately and yeah. start like going yeah. through it. Yep. Uh, with with the iPhone and iPad, technically it's it's buyer beware. You're stuck with it. You're stuck you with it. You can get a refund if you, you know, dance around the, the yeah. instructions, uh, which we've talked we talked about that in a previous episode. So if you search Deemable for for that app but, um, refunds, I believe. Yeah, just search for app refunds on our site, and uh, so y you can, but it, it it's not easy. It's it. Y and when you think about it, it's like the time that will take you to go through the whole process sure. for oh, one ninety nine. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. Just I bet exactly. a lot of people. It's like yeah, then you go, never ah, again. Pff, right. Never. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like. Amber bought, my wife, mm -hmm. uh, bought a couple of apps, and she regretted it, and I didn't find out about it until a couple of weeks later, and she was like, can I, can we still get a refund for that? I was like, Ugh, mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. It's like, it's, uh, yeah, they might, yeah, it didn't bother. So, and the same thing. It's like, yeah, yeah it's too much work. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go. Hey, well, we'll uh, we got some questions here. We do. We answer questions listeners. on the show, don't we? Um, Is that what we do on the show? Sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Uh, we got one from Linda. She asks, uh, I keep deleting apps off of my iPod Touch, but they keep reinstalling whenever the app gets updated. Why? It's driving me crazy. I want to be able to delete apps and for them to stay deleted. Well, that seems fair. Yeah. What's going on? I am running iOS 6.1.3 on a fourth generation iPod. I am running iTunes on my Windows 7 laptop. iTunes syncs over the Wi-Fi. Ooh. Hmm. Well, thanks for your email, Linda, and thanks for all the details. That is really fantastic. Yes, thank you. Um, and that gave me a clue into what's going on. I'm going to guess that you probably don't keep your laptop running all the time. And here's why I think that's here's why I think this is happening. What happens is you connect to iTunes, like you turn you turn on your laptop and iTunes connects, right? Cuz it does the Wi-Fi syncing. And then you close your laptop and you go about your life and you get on your iPod and you install an app. And then you decide, like we were just talking about, I don't like this app. So you delete it. But you do it before you sync with your your laptop again. So you synced, you installed an app, and then you deleted that same app before you synced again. Now what happens is the next time you sync with your computer, iTunes, because it's so friendly, 
and helpful. It downloads that app for you because it downloads in the cloud. The next time you turn on your computer, it goes, oh, you downloaded a new app. Let me grab that. And then it syncs with your iPod and says, oh, you don't have that that app. Let me put that on your phone, your iPod for you. So what's happening is it, it's throwing it back on there when you sync because it's trying to be helpful. It's like, oh, you don't have that app because mm-hmm. it doesn't know that you decided you didn't want it. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're prob- I know you said that you're only – you're not seeing it until it updates, but it's probably doing it beforehand. And you're just not noticing it until the app store pops up with that update notification. Uh, so what you can do is uh, sync more often. Uh, that would probably be, that would probably solve the problem. Um, and, and I'm assuming that's going to be the issue. It's That's the only thing I can think of that would cause that. Um, if you leave your laptop on all the time, I'm not sure what it would be then. You know, um, like if you know, if I may. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, you know, totally. I've had that same problem. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, and do you do Wi-Fi syncing? Yeah, I do Wi-Fi okay. syncing and everything. I have like we have two iPads in the house and we have my my iPhone. Okay. And sometimes I delete the app from here, then I go and grab the iPad and I see that the app is there. Sure. Oh, I'm like, yeah. What's going on? And it is because I set up the iCloud to sync my apps. Right. So right. it was because all my devices had the same user, uh, so they were not just pretty much updating the right. deleted. Once I put sync the same apps on the phone because I didn't want the same apps on my phone to be on my iPhone. Sure. When mm-hmm. I disabled that syncing functionality within yeah. the iCloud, then everybody else is on its own. Mm-hmm. Okay. So because everything is Wi-Fi, right. I don't plug it in there. So, so maybe she has another iDevice. Maybe she doesn't have, yeah, maybe yeah. she has that iCloud sync all my apps through all my devices. Uh-huh. Well, in or, iTunes, you can set it to automatically to download. Automatically, right. And if so, you turn that off in iTunes, boom. uncheck it. I'm going to have to do a little research to find yeah. out where in iTunes that is, and I'll try to include that in the show notes. Yeah. Um, let me write that down right now or I will forget. Because <laughs> yeah. it gets a little – It gets. I, I know exactly. It gets a little bit like, well, come on, I deleted this. It's <laughs> yeah, here. sure. So. And I've never experienced it because uh, even though me and, and Amber both have iPhones and we've got an iPad mm-hmm. – we don't have automatic download. Oh, okay. We've got it on books and music, right. but not on the but apps. But not on the apps because itself. I've got a bunch of apps, like my music apps, that she does not want on hers. And it gets crazy because I have so much more apps on the phone than mm-hmm. on the iPad. Oh, sure. Yeah. So when I got to see my iPad with like 37 downloads, I'm yeah. like, what is going on? And it was exactly that. <laughs> Where yeah. is that setting in the, on the iPhone? On the iPhone? That's you go to in settings, under settings, right? Yeah, settings. And then um, you go into mail, like where do you manage your mail accounts or your general? Like it's not, let me. Uh, No, I don't think it's under mail. I think it's under iTunes. Oh. iTunes and App Store. And that's where you'll see it. So go to settings and then go to iTunes and App Stores. And then you'll see a link that says automatic downloads. There's music, apps, and books. There you go. Turn that toggle switch off, and it'll stop downloading it. And now in, in iTunes on your computer, there's another place, and I'll find that out, and I'll include that link in the show notes. We're going to do that. Cool. Cool. That was a good question. Yeah, that was a good yeah, question. Yeah. That would drive me insane. You, yeah. <laughs> I would hate that. <laughs> if I delete something, it better stay off, because I'd end up throwing my iPhone. Mm. Ah! Okay, we got a uh, another iPhone question, or an iPhone question, I guess. Okay. An iPod question. All right. Uh, Amber wrote in, and this isn't your wife, is it? I think it is my wife. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Amber. Uh, Amber wrote in and asked, at some point, I created a PIN number for my iPhone's restriction setting. I can't remember it now, and I have nine failed passcode attempts. Uh-oh. Uh. Will I ever be able to get in and change my restrictions, or will I be stuck with an in-app, with in-app purchases turned off forever? Help. How can I fix this? Ouch. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, I don't know if this is Amber or not, actually. <laughs> um, hopefully... You have synced your iPhone with iTunes on your computer at least once before. Uh, it doesn't matter if you did it last week or a month ago or you do it consistently. At least once is all that really matters. If you have, this is going to be a lot easier. All you'll have to do is turn on your computer, open iTunes, and plug your iPhone in. And that will reset the count of how many times you can enter the passcode. So even <laughs> if it's locked it... All you got to do is plug it in, just like that, if it's an iPhone 4S. If it's not, you know, it's got a lightning plug. You know what I mean. Um, if you're watching the video. If you're on listening to the audio podcast, you have no idea why I just did. <laughs> but if uh, you just plug it in, and that will reset the count. So theoretically, you could enter PIN numbers until the end of time. 
So you've got you don't have to worry about it getting locked because I think it is on the tenth one is when it locks. Oh, that's crazy. Um, hopefully, at some point, you'll be able to figure out what your pin number was. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, if you can't figure out what your pin number was, then you've got a slightly bigger problem. Uh, you're going to have to back up your iPhone and then restore it from that backup. That will actually clear your pin number, but it'll only work if you've synced it with iTunes before. If you've never synced it with iTunes before, you're going to have to reset the iPhone to factory settings. And that's why I said I hope you've synced it at least once before, because if you haven't, you're going to lose all of your settings and all of your stuff on your iPhone. So get your pictures off. Uh, Make sure that you back them up to your computer. Even if you don't use iTunes, just plug it in and copy them over to a folder on your desktop. Get all that because you will lose it all. Um, And you'll lose all your contacts too. Now, there is a caveat. If you use iCloud to back up your stuff, you can do it that way. Um, It saves a backup to the iCloud and you can restore that. You can do a, uh, what's it called? If you go to iCloud.com, you can wipe your iPhone and then restore it from your backup on the iCloud. So just go to iCloud.com and click those links and it'll show you. Um, But what I would do uh, is start by plugging in your iPhone. If you've ever synced it before, start by plugging in your iPhone and try those passcodes again. And and keep track of which ones you've already tried. That's always been the frustrating thing Mm -hmm. when I forget the passcode. Mm -hmm. Write them down or, or, you know, keep a notepad and write them down. Especially if, you, if you're just doing the four-digit pin code because, I mean, there's only 9,999 options, right? <laughs> You'll hit it eventually. you got to hit it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I'll include a link in our show notes, how to reset your iPhone to factory settings, and also how to do it with iCloud. If you, if you use iCloud to back up your iPhone, you can always go through it that way. So, um, And you may, even if you don't know if you're using iCloud, you probably did set it up because it goes through the setup installation that says do you want to use iCloud and unless you specifically told it no you probably hit yes that's what most people do mm-hmm. so you may have a backup on the iCloud that you can use to restore it so I'll include a link in our show notes with uh, instructions on how to do that cool, Very cool. oh you know what uh, talking about one spark before I was going through I was finally unpacking all of our stuff <laughs> from one spark and I found index cards my wife was who was helping us out with one spark was sweet enough to put out a thing if you have a question write it on an index card that's a great idea if you're not someone who is like anti-analog anything (laughs) yes and i completely forgot about these so (laughs) i wanted to kind of look at these over real quick and see if we can answer some of them try uh let's see the first one says sorry i missed you good luck oh that's not really a question (laughs) i can't read the signature can you Ooh. And P.S. They I voted for I think it's a doctor. Us. It looks like a doctor. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we got. What is the best way to make technology, email, internet, etc., appealing as opposed to intimidating for older people? Uh, listen to Demobile Tech. Yeah, and uh, tell other people about Demobile Tech. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. That's that's the best I got. Um, the biggest thing, and I'll just to kind of address this. The biggest thing I think when people are dealing with technology that don't really love it is they do find it intimidating because they're afraid they're going to break something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they're afraid that they're going to break true. something. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, my mom, my, my mom is such a sweetheart. I'm helping her out getting her her Facebook thing started with a, a her Serenity Nook thing we talked about last episode. Um, you know, I sent her the instructions on how to set up her Facebook page mm-hmm. name. You know, once she got 25 people on her page, she can, she can. get her name. And I sent her the instructions from Facebook, but the Facebook layout has changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, like, the place to click was in a different place. Oh, yeah. So she called me up. And and no offense, Mom, if you're listening, (laughs) this is a good example. She called me up because she was afraid to click the link that said the exact same thing, but it was in a different location. And the biggest thing is just don't. I mean, uh, you know, guys like us and girls like us, you know, we don't, we're not, we don't have magical skills. A lot of times we just try it. Yeah, just and then we remember things. it, you know, for next time. But the first time, we're like, mm-hmm. "I'm not sure if that's what I should do," but click. Hey, it worked. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being willing, I think, to uh, to try, just you know, try things. Yeah. But also, you know, um, once you're willing to do that, uh, and you start playing with programs, you start to, I think, 
build up sort of a interface vocabulary at subconscious. Like after a while, sure. you kind of know, you know, options are often under edit or tools. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just learn that instinctively, but you have to, you know, use a lot of programs and, and just keep going at it. I think um, older people who are, you know, afraid of technology, you know, they don't, they use the programs they've been taught. They don't want to use anything else. Sure. And so they're not really learning that sort of interface language that they can apply to other programs. And they're also not necessarily sure, oh, my gosh, you know, if I touch it, I might break it. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. thing is, like, you know, that that could happen, like, in the early 90s and the 80s. Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> you could break your computer. Yeah. Delete, start, um, out, start. That, has, oh, no. <laughs> that has been cool. Dell, start, out, Dell start. Dell, start. <laughs> Those are the good days. That hasn't <laughs> been true in a couple of decades, though. Sure. Like, they, you know, nowadays they make it... You, you have to try really hard to yeah. destroy Windows. I mean, you have to know what you're doing. And, yeah. and, and I'll tell you, honestly, as somebody who gets calls from a lot of people who need help, the calls where they have totally trashed the computer, those are so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go for it. Just go all out and, and try it and, you know, screw it up. Yeah. It, when you have to call somebody like us to help you, we're going to love it. It's going to be great. Because <laughs> the calls where it's like, I'm not sure if I should do this. Yeah, those aren't our favorites. Yeah, <laughs> but the calls where I don't know what I've done, it just says C colon backslash and nothing else happens. <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> those are a lot of fun. Yeah. So you don't worry about it. Says it, it can't find a boot drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, those are good. Yeah. Those, I mean, they're, they're a lot of fun. They're, they're actually we do have to like think and and work mm-hmm. through problems and. It's- Problem yeah. solving is yeah, really exactly. good. Yeah. But people who do that are people like my dad who know enough to be dangerous, not sure. usually, yeah. you know, grandma People and grandpa. who are intimidated by it. Yeah. The, yeah. Those like, people, you have to know what you're doing to really <laughs> screw up the computer, yeah. Yeah. at least a little bit. My dad would reformat the hard drive about once a week. Yeah, but see, he knew what reformatting was. <laughs> he did, yeah. yeah. If you don't know what reformatting is, you're not accidentally going to do it. Sure. Right. That's true. You know? So try it. Uh, yeah, always Google, you know, just Google uh, the question that you're and thinking. When we in say your head, Google, we mean go, go to google.com and search for. Yes, <laughs> and search for it. And, uh, you know, just search for the question that you're thinking of, and it usually will give you good results. And if not, what's our number, Tom? I have no idea. Right? <laughs> you don't have it memorized yet. I don't have it memorized. have been doing this for, for over a year. No. 1 888 972 9868. Or you can send us an email at questions at com. He's got that one. I Good do know stuff. That. There you go. All right, let's take a look at We got a few more index cards here to look at. <laughs> uh, what is hyper threading? Well,. Yeah, that's a very good question. Guys, yeah, I got nothing. Well, oh, hyper threading. Yeah, you well, know? oh, go for it, Angel. Oh no, yeah, you. I go, well, I know a little bit about it. I you actually know? don't know anything about it. What it's is like, it? Well, a thread is pretty much like you know when you go into CPUs and and, and processors. Oh, okay. You know, you have All like, right. Like, now it's ringing bells. Right. So okay. so it, you know I'm hoping that that's exactly what he was happy <laughs> for. But when you well, have, one one core normally means one thread. You have if you have a multi core processor, it's got four cores or eight. Yeah, we're cores. talking about computer processors yes. in computers or phones too now. Yes, yes, okay. even phones and, and tablets. The brains uh, of some the, of the computer. new tablets supposedly. They, I don't think any tablets really have eight. They say they have eight, but really, well, okay. So that's what hyper threading is. Yeah. Okay. So uh, a thread is just a term for the process that's running on one of those processors. Basically, the, the processor is like. A little dude behind a desk, and he can do one thing at a time. Okay, I'm if, a dude behind a desk. If you have four dudes <laughs> at four desks, they can do four things at a time. Um, with hyperthreading, your dudes, each of your real dudes, can pretend to do two things at a time, but doesn't really do two things at a time. Okay, don't ask me to explain exactly how that works, but that's what hyperthreading well, is. That's, that's Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So it's like virtual threading, but it, oh. it, we're already pretty technical, and I don't understand it, and I'm a programmer. <laughs> okay. okay, so. <laughs> So uh, it, is, it is something to do for our listeners who just it, glazed over and have no idea what you're talking about, um, which I, I'm pretty close to there. Um, <laughs> it is uh, processing the way that the processor works, yeah. mm-hmm. the brains of the computer. If you're looking to make at it simple. two identical devices, one has hyper-threading and one does not, the mm-hmm. one that has hyper-threading is probably a little bit cooler. Is it something that you're going to notice in everyday life? No. Yeah. When would you notice it? When would it make a difference? Uh, if you were doing some kind of like high intensity, like databases, spreadsheets, math, something that just really graphics, would it make a difference in graphics? Maybe well, on graphics. Yeah, ex- normally. <clears throat> well, right now yes, with graphics, you have like more like GPUs, right? Which are okay. like often, isolated. Yeah. They often the have their own chip, right? So it probably intensive graphics stuff would be offloaded to the GPU. Yeah. Right. So 
But you see, for example, like Word, right? Mm -hmm. If you open Word, that's a thread, right? So the right. processor knows that Word.exe, which is the process, mm -hmm. is being threaded at that moment. Okay. But if I open Control N multiple times, right? Mm -hmm. That's where pretty much you would see that. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, oh, okay. hyper threading means like it's using one, but it's able to open multiple pages really mm -hmm. fast. All right. So it's very yeah. unique. And I'm going to believe you. You guys could be compl completely <laughs> BSing me, and I would just be like, yeah, that sounds <laughs> awesome. Not, I'm looking at Wikipedia right now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia. <to> <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, Wikipedia. I add one thing to that, too. Like, uh, your computer multitasks more than you think it does because – you have Word open, but remember Windows is still open and all the other programs you have are still sure. open. And, you know, if they get those little pop-up notifications, like, so normally the computer has to sort of every go so often, like, quickly, really quickly, because you're in the middle of it. So, so quickly you don't notice it, it sort of, like, shuts down the Word process and goes and does those other processes, checks on them, makes sure there's nothing it needs to tell you about, and then comes back. Um, you know, so with multi-cores, right. that gets easier, because instead of, you know, secretly shutting down the program you're working on, you can just offload that stuff to another core. So another thread, if you will. All right. Anyways, we can stop talking about yeah, this. Now. <laughs> yeah. We go all night. So there you yeah. go. Uh, um, I yeah, actually didn't leave a name. I think it's Mike. But uh, there you go. That's what hyperthreading is. Yeah. Okay. The more you know. All right. Two more. These are pretty easy ones. Actually, one is not easy, but I don't think we're going to be able to answer it. Cody and Tony are going on an RV trip, hmm. and they want to create an email group on their iPad. Now, I know that the, I actually talked to these folks. Um, the native iPad email app does not allow you to add groups to it. So you'd have to go into, if you're using like Gmail or Yahoo, you'd have to go into the web settings and create your contact there mm -hmm. and create the group contact. But so, I know some um, email apps will let you create groups. Do you know any off the top of your head? Of emails? Angel? Yeah. I know that I know you know I'm talking to Angel for our yeah. audio listeners. <laughs> what I normally do, I create the groups on uh -huh. my Google contacts. Right. On yeah. Android devices, I was able to access those groups. Right. But I have not tried it on iOS. So yeah, I don't know how that will work. I know you can access them. It doesn't save the group name as a it contact. sends it out to each individual person. Oh yeah. So um, I'm gonna have to do a little I research think... on that. Um, I think I, that's how it works on Gmail, though, too. Like, I have a group for uh, some uh, tabletop game playing. Uh, yeah. And uh, I put in the group name, but it just translates into okay. um, all the people. So the if, people if Gmail too. has an actual email group system, I'm not really aware of it. Yeah, I know that um, Microsoft Exchange servers, if you're using that, mm -hmm. um, the group will transfer across it with the native email app yeah. you can oh. tap the group and it'll send it to that honestly um, nowadays if i need to communicate back and forth with a group of people about a party or a trip or something i use facebook yeah it's true i create, yeah, a, create a, a message on facebook and add everybody and that's true yeah that's true I'm hesitant to recommend Facebook for anything, but... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I'll look into it. Um, I think there is an app that you can get where you'll be able to create email groups because they're on the road with just our iPad. Yeah. Uh, I think that's why it matters to them. Um, so it partly depends on your uh, email Client. provider. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can get in, in touch with you, uh, Cody and Tony. If you hear this, email me mm -hmm. first at questions at dmobile.com. Let me know who your email provider is. And, uh, and try That'll make a difference. And yeah, try Facebook. Facebook's a good. <laughs> you can set up groups on there and uh, keep it private. And in theory, it'll stay private. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for the NSA. Of course, yeah. And, and all the advertisers they sell you information to. But other will, than that, uh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. One last question. And uh, we'll put Cody and Tony's aside. It says Dear Deemable Duo. Awesome. I keep seeing. Oh, uh, wait a second. I keep seeing feature phones that claim to have web capabilities. I thought that was smartphones claim to fame. What gives? And this is by Artis. Ah, <laughs> uh, Artis. He actually helped us out at one spark. Yes, he he manned the booth for us. He was a great guy. What do you think about that? Uh, Feature phones with web capabilities. It's all terminal. You know, it's, it's, it's language. Language doesn't tend to have precise definitions. Yeah, Once it's a marketing time, term. <laughs> smartphones were phones that could get on the internet. Sure. Now I would say a smartphone is a phone that runs Android, iOS, or Windows uh, phone. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's a smartphone. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, it's a, a phone that runs a top of the line yeah. operating system. And I throw Blackberry. Um, yeah, Blackberry. Blackberry you know, um, any that's actually being sold. Yeah. Um, 
BlackBerry and, and Windows are, are trying. They're fighting, trying to stay afloat. Here's a good question for you. Do people make apps for your phone, like other than the phone maker itself? Yeah. Do yeah. Well, third I parties mean, make apps we've, for it? We've That's talked a about... good sign that it's a smartphone. Sure. Yeah, now we've talked about too, though, there's always Java apps, although they're they're a dying breed. Um, most dumb phones or feature phones can run Java apps. Yeah, okay, true. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of phones now, they're the feature phone is kind of going to the wayside. Mm-hmm. Um, the the phone that just has nine buttons on it and makes phone calls are pretty much extinct. Uh, most phones now they have some sort of data connection, um, if even if it's not much. Mm-hmm. Um, you can always send text message, and usually they have cameras built into them. Yeah, it's hard to find a phone um, without a camera. More feature phones are getting more features, um, and you know, adding web capability is just one more. Now, I wouldn't depend on that phone to do hardly anything on the web um, because it probably has a terrible browser uh, <laughs> that is never going to get updated, and in two years will be out of date if it wasn't already out of date when you bought it. Uh, so, yeah, feature phones are just getting more and more features. I predict that in in the future, you won't see feature phones anymore, um, especially as like Ubuntu is coming out. Android, of course, is open source, but Microsoft has attached it and has so many licensing agreements mm-hmm. now. Um, but as more smartphone operating systems get open source, all phones are going to be basically smartphones. Uh, it's just going to go that direction. Just like what happened, you know, with dial uh, dial tone, you know, yeah. Eventually, my grandma still has a, a rotary phone, but most <laughs> oh, of the awesome. rotary phones are gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just you know, everybody moves along to the next the next technology round. So that's what I think. Very cool. All Thanks, right. Sir. Um. Cool. So that's the questions. Let's uh. Let's, let's talk to Angel. Let's, let's ask him some questions. Got here. <laughs> <laughs> Helped us out with some of those. I appreciate it. Oh, I guess. So, Angel, last time we talked to you, um. Well, let's just recap. It's been a while. Uh, you cre- you created an app called the Aurora app. Yes. Um, Beautiful, amazing app. Love can you give it. us Thank like you. a 10 second pitch for that? Because I know what it is and Ray knows what it yeah. is. Oh, yeah. But some of our listeners don't know what it is. So the Aurora app, it's, um, it's a music app that works closely with local artists around your area mm-hmm. for you to rediscover those areas. Right. So we give the voice to artists to create exclusive um, music towards an area which we call an echo mm-hmm. then you go with your phone it's a geographical area it's a ge- yeah right yeah. geographical so you go to your phone you go to that area and you're able to listen to that song in that particular area that's cool and uh so you guys went to one spark which is our uh the jacksonville's big crowd crowdfunding festival that we had uh at the beginning of summer the end of spring mm-hmm. um which is amazing uh, so, how did things turn out for you guys? Uh, did you did you raise the funds you wanted to raise? Um, what what was your impression of One Spark? Yeah, you know, first of all, it was a great experience for us. You know, even yeah. seeing the city come oh, up yeah. together oh, as that one was great. That, that was, was great. like amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, our goal for One Spark was not actually to raise funds to make the app because we okay. built the app. Sure. Okay. What we wanted to do is validate mm-hmm. that people would actually enjoy and use this app more and more yeah and okay. you know i'm really excited to announce today like we have over ten thousand downloads on the That's app awesome so we really gain that validation yeah. from mm-hmm. people and seeing people excited about what you've worked so hard towards it yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the biggest prize ever yeah so sure. that's pretty much what we got out of it we were really excited about it mm-hmm. i mean that, that was one thing that we talked about with uh one spark is yeah we didn't we didn't make big bank on it either <laughs> yeah. i mean it was nice we yeah we did okay Double our budget <laughs> yeah well <laughs> um but it was really great being able to talk to people about what it, we're doing like, and getting their reactions to it. The people who knew us and were like, yeah, we're so awesome. it's so awesome to see you. And also the people who didn't were like, that's great. Wow, what yes. a great idea. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so often, I mean, with, with you guys, you're you know, in your offices and you, know, <laughs> you don't get that feedback you know, from people who are actually using the app. Yes. Like, yeah, you get the feedback on the app store. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But from real people, like face-to-face, getting to talk to them about it and getting to explain it. There's just something really unique about that opportunity. It definitely was, awesome. was. It definitely was. And talking to people that are, you know, like you said, like local, you know, yeah. they come to you and they say like, okay, so mm-hmm. so what do you do? You know? Yeah. Then you tell them what you're trying to do. And not only on you, but also on all the creators that we had around OneSpark. I think it was a great, yeah. a, a, yeah. a great, great opportunity. It was really cool to meet creators too, to see what other people were doing. Yes. I mean, there was, uh, you know, and have those conversations with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? um, so... 
and we, we kind of alluded to it. You know, the money wasn't huge. For yes, for how did you guys do? Can I? Oh, well, yeah, it's public we, information. We, I can we, find no, out. no, no. Of course, yeah. B one spark. There you go. <laughs> no, we results. made um, we made about fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, yes. yeah, good. which good. which was great. You know, yeah. again, it was it was an extra for us. You know, it took care of us to pay for the headphones and all that stuff. Yeah, and little things. Mm-hmm. But having you know, not every day you have one hundred and thirty thousand people coming. Yeah. Um, you know, to experience your product. Sure, sure. And that was definitely just the the spark yeah. that really hit it for us. Now, did you get the amount of traffic that you wanted or that you expected uh, like to your to your site where you guys were located at? Yeah, you know, um, no. Yeah, that's that's I'll, the answer. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> when we talked, I was jealous of your location. <laughs> I was like, oh man, they're at co work. Yeah. Everyone's gonna be going. And I was like, man, I didn't get into co work. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, ah. And then I was surprised when I came by. I was like, it was even compared to our location. We were out at the. Um, the the yeah. dial up church building. Yes. We were kind of a there. hike. Yeah, yeah, we were uh we were the second farthest venue from Hemming Plaza. Wow. So, so and and I figured that wouldn't be that great. Right, right. And it was a, a block off the main drag, which uh co work was too. Yes. But um but yeah, I was surprised that the, you guys didn't have a lot of traffic coming to you. Yeah, you know, um the strategy we had on like on this particular is because my offices are in co work mm-hmm. and I wanted to kind of put like a big monitor to kind of take the time, you know, mm-hmm. for people yeah. to be like listening to, you know, seeing the the whole videos that we sure. had and so on. So I knew that my medium could not be the streets. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, like okay. I knew that from the beginning. Yeah. So for me, the 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 traffic of people definitely was out there. Mm-hmm. You know? Um if I you know, would have I gone to the streets? Totally. Because yeah. it would have been more that personal, you know? Mm-hmm. But it it yeah, I definitely the traffic was not as high as we wanted yeah. to. So what would if you could go back to to 2013 what would you do differently do you think there's anything that you would approach differently or like for someone who's thinking about doing 2014 mm-hmm. um, but really cuz there were some struggles that we dealt with with 2013 the first year i mean yeah. a- any big festival like that's going to have Definitely. the things yes. the hiccups they have to work through would you do anything differently um would you go to a different venue would you <laughs> maybe present your app differently or you know, I got to tell you, um, we had amazing feedback from the app. People used the app. And, um, and Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. You didn't just sit in your booth either. Right. You we were out not. there. We were out there. I mean, and you were on social networks like yes. crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which was like a full-time job. And you had that some was... concerts going too. And we had some, yeah, we had yeah. some secret shows as well. Oh, yeah. that's cool. You know, what I would have done differently to tell the truth was actually bought more headphones. Really? Because <laughs> <laughs> when we ran out of headphones, was such a disconnect because like oh. people did not have the headphones and mm-hmm. we did not have enough, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy with the downloads. I'm happy with where the product is going and yeah. you know what we learned from the people. But it was such a letdown for seeing so many people without headphones that oh. could not experience the app right there yeah, yeah. because we had just run out of them. Mm-hmm. So I really would. <laughs> I know it sounds like the yeah. only thing that really bothers me is that we didn't have enough headphones <laughs> to give more away. No, that's uh, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Are you planning on doing something for One Spark 2014? I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually working on a little, um, little project uh-huh. um, that is for text messaging. Okay, Ooh. it's it's okay. to make text messaging a lot smarter than what we're using. I don't have, you know, I cannot send a lot about, of details yeah, out yeah, there, yeah. but we're definitely going to, you okay. know, we're going to be launching that application. Cool. Um, for this next year. Very cool. Yeah, very excited about it. All right. Um, we'll see. Did you have some other questions for? Him? No. No, you didn't. Uh, I go. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> go oh you ahead did. with your question. <laughs> okay. No, um, so, what's going on with the Aurora app now? I mean, we talked about some possible changes yes. back in February when we were talking yes. about what. How are things going? You said ten thousand downloads. That's so fantastic. We've had over ten thousand downloads, which has yep. been great. Which is uh, all on iOS. All in iOS right now. No, is it? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, random question. Is anybody downloading it for the iPad? Because I mean, because you can download it for the iPad too. Can you look at your statistics and see? Do you know I could look? I just want to see somebody walking down the street with an iPad <laughs> <laughs> and their headphones. Listening to Aurora, just holding it. In. Yeah. You know, we had some, some actually to four people that were, <laughs> yes, people that downloaded me being one of them. Uh-huh. Sometimes I actually download on the iPad and sure. put it, you know, just put it out there. Yeah. But that's a good, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to send you an email to let you know how many people And I want a picture. <laughs> right. I get a picture right. of somebody walking we'll do. down the street with their headphones <laughs> yeah. and their iPad. <laughs> well, we're actually working on Aurora 2.0. Okay. We've been um, creatively, um, technology-wise, we've been really working very hard since 
I'm telling you, after a week after One Spark, yeah. right? We 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 said let's work on our road 2.0. Okay. So um, we're really excited um, what we're doing. Um, we're working on a new feature. Um, uh, first of all, the whole UI of the app is being revamped. Okay. Really? Okay. We're making it very more fluid. I know like a lot of people saw the minimalistic aspect of things, yeah. which are going to be stay there. You know, mm-hmm. that we're going to have that minimalistic approach, clean, mm-hmm. but it's going to be a lot more powerful towards the artist. We'll be able to okay. tell you um, when an artist is having a show around your area. Mm. Oh, so cool. if you are downtown and you're listening to, let's say, Radical Face or Four yeah. Families, for example, mm-hmm. and you're really liking that song, you simply just scroll down and it will aggregate information That's from cool. Facebook showing oh, like cool. their next show is That's there and so awesome. on. You know, little things like that we're adding into the app. So it makes it yeah. a lot more robust for the artist. That connection. That's um, great. Yeah, because remember we talked about when you were on the show last time, I'm – a music fan but i'm also lazy yeah yeah so like i don't know local bands and th- <laughs> that's what i love about your app is i can just be walking down the street and a different song will play yes and it's from a local band and i love that that we'd be able to see okay oh this is the next time they're playing right somewhere probably close to exactly. where it's at. exactly that's awesome so we're doing that um another feature that we're adding is actually a camera and it's a very unique huh. camera feature so while you're listening to a music or to a song or an echo uh-huh. um, you're going to see a little icon for a camera will flash allowing you to grab that moment and when you take a hmm. picture um, you can apply separate filters that we're going to be adding as well with the Aurora effects. Oh, cool. But you can share it on Facebook and it will automatically add the logo of Aurora to the picture and nice. the location and the name of the song and the artist. Okay. So it's kind of a little watermark. Nice. So now you can share a picture that you took maybe on the Main Street Bridge uh-huh. yeah. at night, something awesome. Yeah. And you can share it with people. So now people can actually uh. say like, oh my God, this picture was beautiful where it was. Mm. And it will tell what song you were listening at that point. That's, cool. That's nice. So we're in- incorporating a camera. So it's like kind of sharing the yeah. Aurora experience with someone you who's find not a song, physically there. When you, you find a, a song. To, you need a way to share, share exactly, where it is. Exactly. You know? exactly. Oh, yeah. So it looks really, really cool. We're really excited about that. And um, the other feature that we're working on that I'm super stoked about um, is called Trails. Okay. And um, this feature was like, you know, I... I love music and, mm-hmm. and we, you know, we go to some, so many shows and so on, even for families and everything local. But when you go to a show, sometimes you wish you could like take a song from that set list that mm-hmm. same night. Okay. Like just, just, just pretty much when the show is over, you would like to own a song. Maybe mm-hmm. the artist is saying, guys, this is my last song. Mm-hmm. And if you guys have the Aurora app, you can keep it as soon as I'm done. <laughs> oh, wow. But only for the people that are in that show. So Ooh, it's memorable, oh. it's unique, and it's a very private token that you have, you know? I like okay. that. So we're working, we're in partnership with this company called Lifely. Um, and Lifely just created this unique iPad interface that uses a hardware that you can record a song just patching into the system of um, an EPA, and it automatically uploads it online. Oh, this is a live recording. So it will be a live recording of the show. Oh, that is cool. Available <laughs> That only. same night, only there. I like. I like that it's it's limited though. That Very limited cool. to only twenty four awesome. hours after the show, right? Yeah. So now you're listening to this. The artist says pretty much what song. Mm-hmm. We have the equipment, and we're working on the logistics. We actually have done two right now. We did one um, last Friday. Yeah. At Jack Rabbit's, we had four families, Rickolas, and we had um, a Fjord Explorer. Okay. So we did that. We recorded that set, and also the Dog Apollo. Um, about two weeks ago. So we post those echoes widely available so you can keep them mm-hmm. if you go to that place again. Cool. Yeah, so really live cool. trails will be really cool and we're really excited about this Aurora 2.0. So we've great. been really working hard on it. So the that's... Kickstarter campaign, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no that's <laughs> so great. All this, all this work yeah. comes because um, we actually are filming a mini documentary. It's about like seven minutes long to put in our Kickstarter campaign mm-hmm. because we're going to be releasing a Kickstarter campaign in August okay. to pretty much just make all the things that I've talked here about, yeah. including the marketplace, which enables people to buy Echoes, um, cool. happen. So that's our game uh, plan. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. You got a budget for it yet? Yeah, actually, you know how yeah. Much you're looking to raise? We're starting with $25,000. Okay. okay. Um, with $25,000, you know, we, you know, we definitely have put all the emphasis on what needs to be fixed on the app and sure. the marketplace as well because okay. we want to start 
selling the songs. You know, a lot of yeah. comments on iOS are like, oh, I love it. I wish I could keep the song. Yeah, that's yeah. like, I know, we're working towards yeah. that. <laughs> you know, so it's it's pretty much bringing, bringing that, that, you know, that whole... Um, coming to happen. So yeah. we're starting with twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, cool. All right. Sweet. And you're looking at launching the Kickstarter campaign in August? Mid August, yes. Okay, we actually cool. have filmed we we did something really cool. We wanna just, you know, it's hard to work on the perks. Yeah. But we have mm. really cool ideas for the perks. Mm. Okay. But so we've been working on it. So mid August we'll cool. definitely make get sure out. to uh, let us know. I definitely we'll, will. We'll let our listeners yes, know. Thank about you guys. It. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> uh let's see. We Oh, uh, so other than that, you got any other projects at the Logico you're working on that you can talk about? Yeah, you know, we um, <coughs> um, a couple of friends of mine. Um, we we started um, this company called Roster, mm-hmm. and Roster is a mobile application for high school athletes to get scouted. Okay. So I don't know if you guys heard about Health Box downtown uh, picking no, up. No, no. So Health Box is Blue Cross Blue Shield, and it's an accelerator program. Okay. And um, they pretty much just interviewed you know two hundred over you know over two hundred companies around Florida, and I think worldwide um, to be part of this incubator. They've done it three times, and uh, we got selected. So we started it tomorrow. We're starting tomorrow. Oh, wow, cool. And Cowork Jacks Health Box has pretty much taken over half of Cowork and put some new oh, executive wow. desks. And the application is pretty much just for high school athletes, male and female. And the application feels like a Facebook. Mm-hmm. So it just pretty much makes you a better athlete. Um, and it fetches all that information from you, mm-hmm. including health stats. Mm-hmm. And um, it passes it along to um, scouts. Oh. So you can get scouted. Wow. So it's a very cool app that we're working on. And, you know, I'll pass more details as, okay. as it evolves. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, we talked about a little bit before about the changes coming to OneSpark mm-hmm. uh, for next year. They announced a little while back uh, that there were some big changes. Um, one of them was that there's more money up for grabs mm-hmm. uh, for next year. That's a big uh, change. And this year... Or 2013, it was $250,000 crowdfund. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, there's a total of $300,000. Uh, so $50,000, that's not chump change. That's, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're doing it a little bit differently, though. Uh, there's a $200,000 guaranteed crowdfund. So the crowdfund went down a little bit, but it's 50000 So, I mean, as yeah. far as distributed crowdfund, that's not going to be a, a big difference. Um, and that is solely based on public vote. Uh, but they... What they added is five ten thousand dollar bonuses to the top voted creator in each category. Uh, now they also added in another category. There's five creator categories this year, uh, the upcoming year: art, innovation, music, science, and technology. Mm-hmm. Um, so the top voted creator in each of those categories will get ten thousand dollars, and there's also five ten thousand dollar juried prizes, and those are. Uh, uh, also, the <laughs> I can't talk right. <laughs> um, so there's there's a chance to win an additional twenty thousand dollars if you're the top of your category mm-hmm. and you are one of the ones that get the jury prizes. So that makes a big difference because um, I, I think that was the biggest thing that most people talked about. Like because it was all by public vote, it did distribute out fairly evenly. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, some went more than others, right. and, and that makes sense. Uh, but even the the top winner, mm-hmm. uh, Rethreaded, which is an amazing organization, I love those girls mm-hmm. over there. Um, they only got like seven thousand. Yes, you know. Uh, so this gives a chance for some stars to really shine, uh, and could get up to you know at twenty thousand or more mm-hmm. uh, potentially. So that's yeah. really cool. Yes, it is. One of the things I like uh, that they're talking about changing is they're making it more walkable by <laughs> concentrating the event. Uh, so the footprint of the event will only be 20 square blocks, where I think it was like 30 mm-hmm. or 40 this year. Um, so obviously, like uh, Ignite a Deco would probably be out of the area. Cowork might be out too. Mm-hmm. Um, they're I don't know where they're concentrating the map, but it's going to be a tighter area. So that I think will help everybody because it means more foot traffic to your location. Because yes. there were some great creators that just didn't get hardly any foot yeah. traffic and uh, didn't get to see anybody. Um, and also I think the, one of the things that I am really excited about is there's going to be additional voting and information kiosks. Cause that was the thing. There was one kiosk between our location way, you know, block off of Laura mm-hmm. street and people didn't see it. Mm-hmm. You know, people didn't know. So 
they were having trouble with the app or, you know, or registering or, or voting. And uh, <laughs> the additional kiosks will be good. That's, yeah. that's a great thing. As soon as you mentioned the app, I was watching Angel's face. Like, <laughs> uh, the app. Oh, I, I, you know. Yeah. I, it, yeah. <laughs> It had some. It had some speed bumps, some hiccups. Yeah. I, yeah, we were, we were, yeah, we were like, like, technology advisors for all the people that had problems with the app. Yeah, yeah we were. We actually put up a sign thing. that said, <laughs> "Come to us. We'll get we'll you, help you. We'll help you vote, even if you're not voting for us. <laughs> we'll help you." <laughs> I, I cringe because we talked so much, and you yeah. know that was one of the things that I put out there. I said, "Like, listen, I loved everything." Mm-hmm. It was, mm-hmm. you know, like I know there's changes. It's first, you know. I love the oh, new sure. price yeah. schedule. Like this, this looking good. The app was like a big pain for us, mm-hmm. you know. We helped so many people. It was because I, I talked to some folks uh, there, and it was Ruby on Rails, oh, oh, the website, mm-hmm. and it was basically just a wrapper, yeah. like the iOS version. I'm not sure about the Android version, but the the iOS version. The was iOS version was a wrapper. Wrap. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and what happens is when you do an app like that, it takes longer to load because. If you pull up a website in Safari on mm-hmm. the iPhone, it loads faster than if you pull up a website in another app because of the way that, that Apple handles the, the, the JavaScript yeah. engine. Mm-hmm. So what I was telling people is just go to vote.b1spark.com. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then once they got that, they're like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. Right. I had some people who were on a network like with their iPhone and they just couldn't get it to download they went to vote.b1spark.com and boom, done. I have Megan here with yeah. me, you know, and Megan was like uh, the chief technology advisor for that. <laughs> <laughs> she was helping yeah. so many people as well. And yeah, and it was confusing because a, there lot, were a lot of people, of people said, that like, weren't tech savvy there. Right. You know? And we're like, can I text messages? Like, no, you have to be registered in order to text yeah. messages. So it was just, yeah. Um, it was, yeah, that was. Um, but once they did get registered, that was the easiest way. Yeah. Just send the text message. It's just a text message. They just message. Has, had to register to do it. Right. So there are some good things coming up. I think it's going to be... Uh, I know. I'm excited. It looks really, really, yeah. really good. I think now, we made some least, good choices. Yeah. And people will get the money that at least need to yeah. to move forward with it. Sure. You know? Because so. I know there were some creators that spent almost their entire amount that they got back. Oh, yeah. Like, we we kept it kind of cheap because we're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we you know, we made a little bit off it. But there were a lot of folks that they spent almost as much or more than they got. Yeah. So. We, hit, we hit that mark. We're like, we were right there. So... All right. Well, Tom's giving me the wrap it up sign because <laughs> we're out of time. Yeah. Uh, so we do have to wrap it up. Thanks for all your questions, everyone. Angel, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. Yes, it was awesome. great having thanks. you again. Uh, and it, questions, keep them coming. Call us at our toll-free number. It's 1-888-972-9868. Or you can email us at questions at dmobile.com. I can read the numbers right in front of me. <laughs> also, subscribe to the show, like I said before. All you got to do is search for Dean Will Tech on iTunes or point your favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod. And also, there's links right on our website, the top right, for all of our social networks. Before we uh, finish this out, uh, Angel, people want to find out more about uh, the Logica. Where do they go? Oh, the Logica? It will be thelogica.com. Thelogica.com. Yes. There you go. All um, right. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks to Robert Snyder for video production assistance. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Thank you.